What's up, everybody? Rich Redman here. Another episode of Pick Rich's Brain, live from Miami. Amazing guest, Mr. Grant Cardone. Thanks for tuning in. We are talking about getting great at something you hate, big booty, big money, and time isn't real. Drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor. Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits, over 30 years of been there, done that, wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Pick Rich's Brain. I got an amazing guest this week, Mr. Grant Cardone. Thank you for having yeah, well, me. Th thank you for having me here. This is our yeah. first episode on yep. location oh wow miami florida wow yeah usually we record my shows in crash awesome, studio dude. which is a room about this big yeah. in my man cave in in nashville tennessee it's awesome so, but this is great because we have palm trees it's awesome i go to where the palm trees are um but i, I was talking about downloading all your books yeah yeah amazing yeah what we why, had, why, why did you download the because i wanted to make sure well first of all we share a common thread of interest in that i've read every book by you know N napoleon hill uh, uh -huh. Ogmandino, you know the yeah, secret yeah, i'm yeah. really into sales i i personally believe that no one is ever going to hire you to work your craft hire you to work your craft unless they buy into you as a human being so yeah, we're yeah, all yeah, into sales yeah, so yeah. when i read the first book i was like this is great and then i downloaded you know this this is great this is yeah, your this yeah, is yeah, like your my Mona Lisa, my moniker right yeah. um but yeah i just wanted, I, thought, I thought jimmy was wearing a 10x actually when i walked in <laughs> is that 10x i'll, I'll get the jmv red yeah. red and black fate like every drum set i've ever had has been red and black oh yeah you know yeah. um but this is you know pick which is brain we talk about all things music motivation and success and i usually interview i'm interviewing actors i'm interviewing musicians producers, creative types. This is going to be great for my audience because you are an expert in business, you are an expert in sales, you are an expert in social media, and you are a New York Times bestseller. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of information that we Which, can Which, by share. the way, doesn't mean a lot just for you guys out there that are, you know, want to write a book and... I mean, the publishers hate when I say this, but the there, York, there's a there's a formula, right, for when you release it and well, all that. Well, it's all bullshit. Like, like, <laughs> I love this. The bottom line is, you either made money on the book or you didn't, and most people never make money on a book, right. even the New York Times bestseller. So, a book should not be probably any more than a CD today, or or or, or a drop, or whatever you would call a, a release today. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a business card. Yeah, yeah. How are you going to make money? Yeah. Like you guys, you guys that are you artists out there that are committed to start being starving artists, promise you you're going to get it. Yep, you're going to get it, and it's going to be way more than you ever freaking bargained for. Yeah, and it's going to make you hate your art. It's it's interesting because you know I tell people my tale and I say, look, it. I I've been playing drums since dinosaurs roamed the earth. The year was 1976. I got a blue yep. sparkle snare drum. I was getting out of high my, school. My, in par my, yeah, my parents, you know, I mean, if I had been born 10 years earlier, I mean the. I'm actually putting a band together. It's called it's called 6979, and we only play music from 1969. That's the uh -huh. golden age of music. Yeah. And you were a teenager. Yeah. In those yeah. years. Oh. Huh? I don't know, man. You that was rough years for me. Yeah. Oh my god, terrible years. That's another story. That's terrible. a that's a holiday podcast. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> Black Sabbath. <laughs> all the the bands. We too much yeah. weed. You know. The Beatles. The Skipping Stones. School. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All the exactly. Well, you you turned it around, man. Yeah. You turned it around. Um, but uh, what were we talking about? Oh, well, let's we keep talking about you, man. Look at all this stuff. You're you're you appear on Fox News, Fox Business, CN, CNBC. I actually created that's this crazy. studio because yeah. this this is a great thing for for any creative person. I would go to Fox once or twice a month and really really once a month and 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 uh they, then they wouldn't have me back really they're like we just had you here <laughs> like, yeah but i got something to contribute today about what's going on it's not bad that's great no no it's terrible because I, I drive down there i'm in the car they send a car over which is stupid yeah they send a car can, can we send a car over yeah yeah you can send a car over but but you know how long am I going to be on TV? Like, like how much time do I get? That's all I wanted. That's what every artist wants. How much time do I get on stage? Are you going to showcase me? Do I have time to grab an audience, right? right? And so I'm doing a gig with Neil Cavuto on Fox News. I'm all excited about it. I'm driving over there. It takes 35 minutes to get there in LA. The whole, the whole interview lasts like three minutes. I get back in the car and I'm pissed off. I'm calling Sherry, COO of the office. And I'm like, I'm done. I'm never going back there again. This is bullshit. They don't value me, you know. I'm like, like going into this big rant, right, yeah. of resentment. And and I said, we're gonna build a studio, and I'm gonna do the show I want as often as I want. Perfect. Okay. This was probably seven, eight years ago. Social media is starting to really blossom. Today we have more followers than Neil Cavuto has. <laughs> wow. So I have more viewers on a live stream on Facebook yeah. than he will have viewers on Fox News. Wow. 
at three o'clock in the build it they will come you know they will come to you or just uh, or maybe it's are. just get pissed off enough and it's, something will happen yeah it's amazing maybe. i don't know um but you know i you know I, I started playing that blue sparkle snare drum and i was committed to my craft you know 1983 the police come out with synchronicity i say this is what i'm going to do to my lo- with my life and all these years later i say like i'm not only a survivor of the music business i i'm, I'm thriving in the music business what's left of the music yeah, business yeah. it's file sharing is it's changed so many times and we have to Dis- it's disrupted it's we have to evolve with it we have yeah. to keep changing yeah. and uh, you know yeah I was a starving artist I didn't make any money to speak of until I was 35 years old yeah you know that was 12 years ago and I've tried to do smart things with my money and I'm getting even smarter in the last couple of years you yeah, know yeah, yeah. Uh, but but I think that there's a lot a lot of those creatives want to know like yeah, well, how can they save for retirement? How can they have a 401k? How could they have passive take income? Take control, man. You got to take control. Like the, the example I gave you with Cavuto in the studio, right? I yeah. was like, I took control. I make a joke about, oh, uh, I got angry and so I did something. But the reality is you have to have control of your career. Mm-hmm. And everywhere you turn control over to someone else, you're going you're gonna to get hurt. So the Keo, the, the, you saved some money. This is what our mom and dad told us. Take the money, get the money out of your check, buy a house. It's a savings plan. It's a terrible plan. House is a terrible, awful, dumb, ridiculous plan, if you really look at it. Yeah. It's stupid. But it's better than nothing. No, it's terrible. It's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. It's better. The single family home. It is better than nothing. Literally, like, I don't mean it's better than doing nothing. I mean... Buying a house is one of the dumbest things a human being can do. So you're on the you're on the rent where you live, and you then rent where you live, and you own things that produce income. Okay, right. So ima- imagine if you were going to produce music or go on tour, and you had to pay. Would you do that? Dude? Well, there are some bands that do that in the beginning. They pay to actually get on the tour for the exposure to create a brand. Yeah. Okay. But would you keep doing that for no? Like, no. That's what a house is. Gotcha. You're paying to live there. Right. So, so I, I don't, I don't mind. Your, your mom said, "Well, don't rent, own." Right? The landlord makes all the money. What you should have gotten out of that was become a landlord. Right? If the landlord gets all the money, become a landlord. So, like, I rent where I live, and I own a bunch of property right. that people rent for me. Forty thousand units. Right? Four thousand. Four thousand. A little over four thousand. Forty thousand we'll, we'll, is the goal. We'll go to forty thousand. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. We'll, we'll get to forty thousand. Great. That's amazing. So, and all that's all that's that's money for the artist, by the way. Okay, you look at Arnold. Arnold did the same thing. He made his money in apartments. He didn't make his money as acting. He got he got residual income coming from this other source. Schwarzenegger. Gave, yeah. Wow. Gave him the freedom. He did Mr. Universe. Made a little bit of money with that. Had had it, wanted to do the acting thing. Everybody said he couldn't. Right. And he was buying apartments in in uh, Long Beach. Wow. Yeah. Income producing properties. Okay. Not all real estate is created equal. So like set programs, kios, retirement accounts buying houses all that was built to trap people it was built by banks right. like if you look at the real winner and i know we're talking this is for artists and they're like oh, dude i don't want to go there no no but, real estate this is just this is like there's something on my mind yeah yeah but you know what do you want you want to you want you want to you want a record that's going to pay you residual right. what does the actor want i want a movie that hits that pays me residuals right right so we talked about keanu he did pretty good off of some of that stuff he did you know he the did. residual the residuals are stupid yeah you want residual passive income, right? So, um, closest thing we come to that in the music industry is, you know, a lot of things we talk about all the time are basically we're trading try time for money yeah. consistently, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so if the red light is not on the recording studio, or if yeah. I'm not on a tour bus playing yeah. music for somebody, I am not making any money. The closest thing that ha- happens with us is that we can write a song, and that's intellectual property, yeah. and it's recognized by the government. Drum beat is not recognized by the government. You have to put words to uh-huh. music, and then that could be drum, licensed, drum, drum. right? It could be. And but the thing is, is that that. Uh, Thing yeah, makes or breaks the band. It's, yeah, yeah, it, yeah, but, you know, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but th- then, so you can write a song. It becomes intellectual property. It could be licensed to TV and film. It could be. It could get to a Bieber. It could get to a right, right. You know, a, a right. Bruno. And then, if it hits on terrestrial radio, then the money starts to come in. The thing that's been disrupting that is now we have Apple Music. We have Spotify. So there's these. Uh, yeah. For ten dollars a month. You get the entire everything, history everything of music. To. Exactly. And I resisted it forever. Right. And right. I said, I'm an idiot. I, I, it, I gotta have to join this party. Yeah, exactly. So now the songwriters, they make and write a hit song, but they're making point zero 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 one right. of a cent for every time it plays. So this is this is why I wanted to, to meet with you so we can you know give options for creatives to have some sort yeah. of passive income. Yeah. And you're saying it's so, real estate. Well, all I'm saying is like I'm an artist. Right. Okay. Like like my, I'm married to an actress. People see me as a businessman. I, I'm like I'm not. I'm not a businessman. I have an idea. Right. What is a business? I have an idea. 
and I want to monetize it as quickly as possible. The better the businessman is, the, the, the more successful the businessman is or business person is, hey, I have an idea, an art, art. I, I need somebody to monetize that art, mm -hmm. right? Van Gogh, Van Gogh was one of the great, great painters of all time. He sold one piece of art his whole life. It was after he, he died. Died, died yeah. in poverty, yeah. right? He sold one piece to, to a nephew or something or to a, some family member. Never sold another piece. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew he was good, great until he died. He produced a tremendous amount of art, sold one piece. What if he'd have sold? What if he'd have pressed, marketed, promoted, pushed his product? Can you give me one of those books right there? I just want to show you something. Like, th th this is a piece of art. I have an idea. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to solve a problem in my life. Most artists are singing songs or making music about things that are going on in their lives. Right. Right, they're trying to discover something. You would do that even if no one, no one ever paid you. Right. The fact that we live on a planet with eight billion people and, and it's an economic planet where people exchange money every time with things they find valuable, they should pay you, if, particularly if it's good art. Right. So I had an idea. I just want to monetize the idea. I want to use the idea. So what do we do? We create a book. There's no money in books. Mm -hmm. They pay me a dollar thirty for a book. The publisher doesn't help me sell any of them. Nothing, zero. Like they, 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 they buy, they sell no books, right. none, zero. Right. So really, you should self-publish if you're going to write a book. They really expect you to do your own marketing. No, they expect you. They, 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 they are the ultimate uh, brothel. <laughs> they will take any girl or guy, anybody that will exchange sex, and they're going to pay you a little freaking little little bit, maybe. <laughs> and I, I have a do I have a book. I make a dollar a copy. <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. It, uh, we do but, it, but the but problem is, we did it. The problem is, if they sold a million copies yeah. for you, if they produced, pushed, marketed, promoted, no, they do nothing. They don't get your publicist. There's nothing they do, right? right. So, again, a, a space of disruption, mm -hmm. right? So, so the art. I had to take control of this, right? So, what do we do with this book? We write the book, then we do an audio, then we do a download, yep. then we do video. You can get this book like six different ways, ways. and then what do we do? We go do a concert that does twenty million, right? Okay. Right. So I'm doing concerts now. You're doing concerts. Yeah. You're filling yeah. arenas with yeah, uh, yeah. with uh, with fans. Yeah, this is yeah, what I exactly. you know I a, a, a thing another thing we have in common is that you are, you also get hired to speak. Google, Sprint, Affleck, Toyota, GM, Ford. Yeah. That, that's how we, we I made my first uh, my first business was consulting big companies. Now we're starting to spend more time with individuals, which has been really good for us. One on one. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, more more entrepreneurial rather than. Rather than the big company writing me a big check, right, and owning me a mm -hmm. little bit, yeah, you know, which is again goes back to what happened in the record business, yeah. right, in the music business. You were basically owned. You were property. Yeah, you had to pay back that. You lost control. Mm -hmm. Gave it to the manager. Gave it to the agent. Happened to actors. It happened to bands. Look at look at uh, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart says nobody's going to own the tour. Right. I'll invest my own money. Right. He's a businessman. Right. That's a real business. I'm going to invest my own money. I'm going to take my own risk. And I'm going to own all the profits of that tour. The highest paid comedian ever. I love that. Business, yeah. Businessman. Yeah, usually like the joke is, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do I'm going to do something I can really rely on, something really stable. Comedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh that is that is amazing. And and, and it would be it would be for the artists if yeah. you would uh, take ownership of producing the audience. See, what the artist wants to do is, I want to do art, but I don't want to produce the audience. Like, if there's no audience, there is no art. You know, the old thing about the tree falling in the forest and there's nobody there, did anybody hear it? Right. Look, if, if you produce art and nobody buys it, was there any art produced? Because right. there was no exchange. I needed it in my home. Right. And I think a lot of creatives, are, they, some people get, they actually feel uh, guilty for wanting to make money from their art. And I go, no, yeah. it, you know, music and business should never go together. But if, if I want to get behind a set of drums every day, I have to consistently sell. I have to shout from a mountaintop that I exist. Right, right, and then I am right. worthy of the call. And then when you, the opportunity comes, you have to knock it out of the ballpark. And I, I'm actually, I'm actually one of four motivational, inspirational keynote speakers in the world that plays the drums. So my competition is almost zero. Right. So I go in to big companies, you know, your Cisco, your Johnson Johnson, your Hewlett Packards, and I talk about my crash philosophy mm -hmm. for success. It stands for commitment, relationships, attitude, skill, and hunger. So my goal for my next 20 years is how can we take this crash philosophy for successful living for personal and professional development and bring it to corporate America and it, it's a right hook and a left hook of 
what I call edutainment. So I'm hitting over him over the head with educational content in an entertaining way right, right. and doing it with the drums, which is man's first instrument. And so a lot of people, they look at me and they're like, ah, that's a real, man, you sold out. That's a compromise. Are you, are, you, are you kidding me? I make more in one day than I do doing yeah. a yeah. year worth of recording yeah. sessions. And, and, and you're providing great value for, 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 for the consumer. Yeah. And they're getting some art rather than some win, lame, lame speaker yeah. that, that's just la, 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 Death la. Death by PowerPoint. Data. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I love that. I love that. I had I had Roddy Chong, maybe you saw, he, Phil. he's the violinist. Yes. And, and I've had him at both of my 10X growth conferences. And I'm like, Roddy, do, do, do the violin to a definition. What does the word commitment sound like? And then play that. Right. And then define it. Right. And, and because then people get some look, people don't even look up words. Right? Yeah. Like, like teach me how how do I commit? How do I follow through on something? Like we again, we live on an economic planet. Your 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 point about selling, did you sell out to Hewlett Packard? Dude, he's going to go to Whole Foods. They're not going to take his drum beats. But like when it's a hundred bucks a bag, right? I don't know if you guys are out there paying whole paycheck, paycheck. yeah, huh? Whole paycheck. It's a whole paycheck, man. yeah. Everything that you work for between Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and all of a sudden you go to Whole Foods, you want some good food, whatever that means, right? That's some bullshit, right? Okay, it, it's a hundred bucks a bag. You know, it is not the best actor, the best musician, the best drummer does not win the game. Like you, you, you know better than I do. The competition is fierce, and you have to figure out how to separate but yourself best, from the noise. Best doesn't win in the art world, right? It's the most known. You right? know, is Bruno Mars the best singer ever that's ever lived? He's he's great, he's but you know, I mean, I, what's the difference between good. good and great and levels of greatness? And there's a lot of great out there. Yeah, I mean, when I when I watch these TV shows about where they're discovering the, I'm like, no, that's some talent right there, and we never heard of. Yeah, right. Why didn't that person make it? You know, was Mick Jagger the best singer in the world? They just kept hustling and hustling and hustling and hustling and hustling. Was the Rolling Stones a good name for a band? Well, you just keep. Being the Rolling Stones, and eventually it gets sticky. You know, and now we compare every rock band to the Rolling Stones. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and I, and I know this. We're talking about them. We're talking about the Brunos and 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 the Ushers, because they got to the top of the food chain. Mm -hmm. And the only thing all three of them have in common is they made a shitload of money. Yeah. Over and over and over. We don't know any failing artists that we're talking about. Like, oh yeah, he was unbelievable. Really? Why? Why don't I know his name? <laughs> Because he didn't make any money. Yeah. And this is the artist needs to flip this idea that you need to starve. I mean, if you're committed to this starving artist concept, I had a guy tell me once, if you want to write books better, you need to drink alcohol. I'm like, dude, if I drink alcohol, I can't write at all. <laughs> he wanted you to drink while you wrote? He says, you should drink because, what's his name did it? The guy that was in Florida with the big beard. Hemingway. Oh. Hemingway. Oh. Hemingway <laughs> was a drunk and supposedly got his inspiration from alcohol. Right, right. Yep. Like, if I smoke weed, I use, dr I use Advil, I can't write. But wasn't Hemingway the best career move he had? Death? <laughs> yeah, they didn't know. Yeah. See the right. artists? See yeah. how they think? I know. So dark. Jim, Jim, <laughs> so dark Jim. Jim is what you would call a renaissance man because he has, he, you know, he's sold exotic cars. He has a voiceover business. He does video production. He's into LED lights. Oh he does everything. He really does. He, he dabbles, man. It really is great. Um, and look at all these books, man. Uh, Sell to Survive. If you're not first, you're last. Seller Be Sold. Closers. Survival Guy. Obsessed. What's your favorite book? Is it this? Is this it? Is this like the Mona Lisa? No. You know, I, probably my favorite book is probably the book I just I, I wrote in two hours. What, can you grab the Millionaire Booklet? Right the, oh, there's the yeah, Millionaire there Booklet. Okay. This is probably my it is a booklet. favorite book. This is what I should have written first. Okay, now I'll tell you the story behind this. This is how the artist plays the game. I had written a book called Be Obsessed or Be Average, my sixth book. And the agreement with uh, Penguin was I cannot publish another book without giving them right of first refusal. Right. They took 19 months to produce Be Obsessed or Be Average. You guys got that book around here? Thanks. It's a podcast, so you guys can't see it anyway. But I like touches. stuff. <laughs> I, guess I am an artist. I want to touch everything. So, so, so I'm... This is 19 months in production. 19 months, man. Nice. Because I got a third party involved. They decided on the cover with me sitting on the jet engine of my plane. I thought it was terrible. I'm like, this is a bad idea. They're like, oh no, we love it. It's like a movie. I said, but you ain't in the movie business. <laughs> and most movies don't make money. So, You're right. So in the meantime, like my first book took uh, three hours to write and, and about 90 days to publish. This took two hours to write. And I was in the marketplace with the book 72 hours later making money with it. That's amazing. 38 language translated into 38 languages within 60 days. 
they called up and said, you have an agreement not to write a book until this one comes out. I said, this ain't a book, this is a book booklet. Booklet, ah, this amazing. It's a booklet, dude. It's not even, doesn't look like a book, it's not big like a book. It's a, but now, what, now what was that selling for, but, a booklet? Uh, this book sold for nine dollars. We now give it away for free. We've given away hundreds of thousands I mean, of copies. I mean, God, I mean, I can. That write book's a, worth about thirty-eight bucks. I can write a I book on a plane this big. This is great. So, so this book has been read by five-year-olds, teenagers. I love it. It's been translated into thirty-eight languages. Just keep this in mind. Like, speed is the new commerce, right? If you're going to write a song, you need to write it quick. Right. You guys don't need to make it perfect. Great greatness. You're not going to achieve greatness w by, by by making it perfect. Perfection is not the commerce of today. Speed is, okay? Frequency is. Content, the amount of content is. Mm -hmm. You're not going to discover your greatness. I'm sure your drumming's changed over the years. Oh, right? yeah, like, sure. You thought you were good in the beginning. Oh, yeah. The, you, when did you start? If you're not like growing. Teenager? I was uh, six years old. I've yeah, been, yeah, been yeah, playing yeah, for 41 I, years. I yeah. skills. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then you start learning all these different Oops. layers of those skills. It's the yes, yeah, it's, it's the ten thousand hours. Yeah, yeah. You I, know? I, see, I love Gladwell's ten thousand yeah, hours. I mean, that's I, I, believe, I believe in that big time. I mean, big time. And I tell people, hey, I, I put in that ten thousand hours. That's easy. That's like practicing like yeah. eight hours a day for about six years. Yeah. Um, I did that easy before I even played music with another person. Yeah. You know, so putting that time in, you know, putting that time at the time in the trenches. Frequency, man. Frequency. You yeah. guys need to do stuff more often. Like if you want to, if you want to build a social media file, I got 5 million people following me on Facebook. That's amazing. Like amazing. Dude, I, I, I've I, never got undressed. I've, I haven't done, <laughs> haven't had sex with a strange person online. I don't do comedy. I don't do music. I do business. I teach people how to do business. Right. Like it's not what I do is not a fun. Well, thing. that's fantastic practical advice that a lot of, that is not taught in schools, which I read in your books. Like, uh, they don't teach us how to invest. They yeah, don't teach yeah. us how to make money, save yeah, money, yeah, yeah. balance a check. Nothing. Yeah. And it's just like it's just like a regurgitation of facts, and then good luck. Yeah. Into the wild you yeah, go. Yeah. You know. And you, and did you have a traditional education, or did you yeah, say? Yeah, no, I spent seventeen years going to school. Okay. Se seventeen yeah. years. Uh, you know, the last five years plus the five. Yeah, the last ten years, I was, I was just basically smoking drugs every day. Then you just. Then you said, I am going to sell. No, uh, what happened was I went to a treatment center for drug addiction, mm -hmm. got out of the treatment center. The counselor said, you'll never make it. You have too many dreams. I said, why won't I make it? He's like, you're going to be back here. Or you're going to die. I said, all right. Well, I know I'm going to die. Shit. Everybody dies. <laughs> Question is, am I going to live? Right. And I'm not leaving here. I'm not leaving here. And I'm going to spend every day in a freaking meeting. All I'm going to do for the rest of my life for 30 years is go to meetings. Dude, I, I want to live a life. I want to write books. I want to be a speaker. I want to help people. I want to change the world. Right. I mean, my life was renewed. Right. I'm not using drugs. I'm not a slave anymore. I want to change the world. He's like, you'll never make it thinking like that. I think there's a great book there. That this it, it, it's, it's Be Obsessed. Okay, with. gotcha. He says, he said, it's the one you hadn't read. I got to read that one, Jim. Okay, Be Obsessed. Put that on my yeah. to-do list. <laughs> and, 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 and look at all the great artists. They're obsessed. They were obsessed, man. They were freaking maniacs. Yeah. So, so I said, look, I'm leaving here. And... Um, I had what 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 my problem was was not drugs. My problem was boredom. When I was bored, I got in trouble. The devil's playground. Devil's <laughs> playground. Man. Right. I started doing stuff that just it, it was destructive for me. So I went back home to Lake Charles, Louisiana, a little town. I had a job in sales. I hated, and I'm like, I'm gonna throw myself completely into this job, and I'm gonna become a, I'm gonna become a master. I'm gonna become the Mozart of sales. Right. It's all I could do. I, I, I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't a musician. I didn't know a guitar or a violin or drumsticks or something like I'm gonna throw myself into this gig that I hate, which I, which has been one of the big turning points in my life. L get great at something you hate, and I guarantee you'll get great at the, at the things you love. Wow. So you initially weren't fond of sales. Hated it. And then who likes sales? And then you right? fell in love with it. What freaking maniac would like rejection, <laughs> disappointment, discouragement? Oh, having to convince people. Every every musician, every falls in love with rejection, no. or they don't they don't make it. Yeah, but no. Who who wants to go out and pitch? Oh yeah, yeah. You know who wants to go out? The the guy on Sunset Boulevard in L.A. You know Jesus over there doing his pitch. Like everybody's like he's crazy, but he's pitching. Oh, the guy dressed up as Spider Man, the fat Spider Man, and the yeah, fat, yeah, or fat whatever. Batman, yeah, They're yeah. the whack. Yeah. But at least he's pitching. Mm -hmm. He's not at home watching Netflix. He's not begging. Okay. Really. By, by the way, LA is filled with a bunch of people that do zero. The 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 the, the land of concept. It's waiting for them to for to land in their lap. Dude, dude, like what are you doing? You're working it out. 
You've been writing the thing for seven years. When does it get finished? I know. Oh, I, I got to get it perfect first. No, you, that, that is your that is your. Oh, the mom. script. The guy that's in the coffee what, house whatever. writing the script. Whatever. Yeah. What, yeah. Whatever he's writing. <laughs> he's rewritten it so many times now, it's not even good. Right. It was good in the beginning. Yeah. And then he added so many different things to it. Now we don't even know. Nobody knows exactly what just happened. You've been to that movie? Jim actually followed me around for a week and did a two-hour documentary on the, a week in the life of a drummer, and I it whittled it down to 38 minutes. But what, what, what was the <laughs> yeah. actual genesis of that? That was, hey, you want to do this? Sure. All right. Good. Let's do it. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So, so and, and that's, how, that's how somebody should build social media. You guys mm-hmm. that are, maybe you're a musician, or you're writing songs, you should be dropping content every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what's there? There must be there. I have been on Facebook since it opened to the public. From it was only for college kids, and then two thousand, I think seven, seven a hit. So we're looking at a decade that I've been on there, posting once or twice a day with quality content about yeah. motivation, yeah. what I'm doing in the world, yeah. finding the people those hundred thousand people that care. They say there's a hundred thousand people in the world somewhere that care about you. Just got to find them, uh-huh. and then tips about drumming and how to make it in the music business. Killing myself for twenty thousand followers. Yeah, yeah, like killing myself. Yeah, yeah. So I had there's something missing. In what, my, what do you have now? How many? I got twenty thousand followers yeah, yeah, yeah. after yeah. ten years, and um, and it's about the same numbers on yeah. Twitter and Instagram. So how they, many times you post today? Oh, uh, twice. Yeah, it's yeah. not enough, man. Not enough, and it's not organic enough. You, it because be, they're saying you're only supposed to now. I'm talking to the algorithm people, and they're like, you should only post once a day. Yes, <laughs> I've had them in my. <laughs> Okay, I love it. Facebook called so me. Post more. Facebook called me. There, there's no regulation on it. Like they can't stop me. Okay. So you just upload and upload and upload have, quality content all day. As long as it's good. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. So so first of all, you don't, the more authentic it is. Like we we produce content in the studio. This is less watched than something in my car driving over here. So I'm in my car this morning. I'm dri- I'm getting ready to go get a haircut this morning. People love that. Behind the scenes, they, they like it, man. Like, what? What am I talking about? Okay, I'm. Oh, you know, this morning I do a video on being unreasonable. I shoot the video on my phone. I don't use Jimmy. I don't need Jimmy. Jimmy Jimmy's a pain in my ass. Hey. Okay, <laughs> I don't need Jimmy. I shoot the video on my phone. I drop it on. Bang. Nobody calls me from YouTube and says you can't do that. I right. pop it on YouTube. I take the same video to, to Facebook. I'll throw it on Instagram. Yeah. I'll throw a minute of it on Instagram. I might throw it in my storyline. Bang. Done. You want to be out there, man? Even it's, more. It's Jesus on the street corner. Yeah. In Hollywood, mm-hmm. he's there all the time. The right. Spider Man. Yeah, you're looking. You're going there to look for him now. And you do. And you do. Like I said, you're you're an expert in business. You're an expert in sales. You, you're a social media. Maven. I'm sixty you're, years you're, old. You, man. you do. You do a lot I of things. I should not be doing what I'm doing on social media. Right. Okay. It was more Gary Vaynerchuk's era. Right. Okay. Gary's probably fifteen or twenty years younger than me. I should not have the following. Ty Lopez. He should. It's it's perfect for his age group. Okay. I'm sixty years old. Right. I have. Seven, eight million people between Instagram and Facebook follow me, yeah. and I'm talking about business. But I'm you're open to it, and you're committed to it, and yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, uh, and that 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 means somebody needs more than one genre of music, though. You got to have more, n- not everybody wants to listen to rock and roll. Some people want to listen to yeah. M- some people love the drums. Some people love the guitar. So so you doing interviews, reaching outside your audience. That's how you're going to build that thing. Let me ask you this: I've had also people say, and, and I love your your take on this. They say, Rich, you do too many things. I say, Say okay, so I, I'm, a, I'm an author. I'm yep. a motivational yep. speaker. Yep. 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 I'm a touring drummer. I'm a recording drummer. I'm a producer. And for the last four years, I've been acting, studying comedy, yep. improv. Yep. And uh, they say your Instagram feed is very confusing. Yeah, you just got to do one thing. Yeah, and keep all that other stuff secret. The, the people that are telling you all this. the people that are just musicians are saying. You're you're mixing, you're acting, you're speaking, you're authoring, your motivation, and you're drumming all in one page. I'm like, that's that's what I am. That's yeah. who I am. Yeah, exactly. So you, you should, you know, first of all, the people telling you that I got, I have six hundred sixty thousand people following me on Instagram. Right. This morning I did a post that's probably had thirty thousand views already. That's awesome. So I would listen to those people. Yeah. Not some guy that that has two hundred seventeen followers on Instagram. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> when did you notice that hockey stick? When did that start happening? Uh, again, the free it, it, the frequency, the frequency, the frequency. Mm. It's like, can somebody total up how many numbers we did yesterday? I had a million views on YouTube last week, and you have half a million last followers week. on YouTube. Only a half a million. Yeah, I should have a million followers on yeah. YouTube. Well, I start I, thinking I, about get this. I put a GoPro over my left shoulder of yeah. me recording a number one song in the studio, so kids want to see this. They go like, 
show me, peel back the curtain. What is the music business is like? This is the music business. Me recording a hit song uh-huh. in the studio with the players. Some kid in his basement doing a cover of that song that went number one has 10 times the right. views. Right. How? Right. 145,000 views yesterday. That's great. On, on YouTube, okay? But, but yesterday, we probably posted three to four videos on YouTube yeah. yesterday. Mm-hmm. Maybe more than that. Facebook, I guarantee you, we were on Facebook at least 12 times mm-hmm. yesterday. Probably two live streams. So, like, again, it goes back to this concept of frequency. There's 8 billion people on the planet. Drop the content. Go live. I'm going to lose my friends doing this. Why okay. is that? Because you're always like, you, 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 are you distracted? I had to unfollow you. I had to unfollow you. Okay. Oh, because there was too much. Too much. I unfollowed you. I'm like, then unfollow. Well, me. then I'll see you at the, the party. I'll see you. He at didn't the- buy, he's not buying my music anyway, dude. Right. He wants it for free. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, send me that free, send me that book. He, he's not buying anything from me. So, so my friend, my family, my family's like, oh my God, my sister's like, I saw this thing you did on Facebook. Are you in trouble? Are you having problems? I'm like, look, hey, 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 don't believe everything you see. Right. Okay. We're trying to build an audience here. So what I would say is I'd take, I'd take the person, I'd take Rich, who is Rich, mm-hmm. and I would start laying out all those things you said you do, and that's all your topics. Author, speaker. Mm-hmm. You know, Motivation. what else? Motivation. Right. What else? I'm a producer. Producer. A recording drummer, a touring drummer. Recording drummer. And an educator. Educator. Mm-hmm. What else? Um, and I, I'm an actor. A- actor. Okay, mm-hmm. what else? Uh, let's see. Things about you, like, are you an angry person? Are you a happy person? Oh, highly happy. Oh, you're highly happy. Yeah. Highly happy. Well, then, that, that, I poop, that, I poop that, unicorn. That screws up your audience right there, just being highly happy. Highly happy. Well, they want drama. Huh? They want drama, right? Well, I mean, I'm oh. just saying, like, you just lost all the angry people. So what, what, how, how do I appeal to that? I don't know, man. You, you, you ever have any problems in your life? I'm hearing about all the good stuff. I just, mostly, I just try to live in that land of unicorns and rainbows, man. So he's a unicorn, look. I like. I, okay. I'm not going to buy unicorns late at night from Home Shopping Network, but I, I love them. You look at them, though, without a buy, <laughs> which is really weird. <laughs> Uh, kids? You got any kids? No kids. I've tried marriage you, twice. You, oh, yeah? Oh, good. So you've been divorced twice, dude. Yes. You need to start talking about that. You think so? Holy bro. How Talk- many divorced people are you got fifty percent of the population right now? You you want you wanna know you wanna know something? My band. Yeah. Five guys. Yeah. All divorced. Fifteen divorces. Fifteen divorces, five guys. Yeah. Who's eight? Why? One, two, three, four, five, six guys, fifteen yeah. divorces. Yeah. 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 I have to count I can look at us like but, like like but, see, that goes back that goes back to you you are the sum the summation of the five people you spend the most time with. Oh yeah, and we have you spent know. twenty years together. Diesel fuel, blood, sweat, tears, building a brand. And unicorn you know? pornography. And yeah, <laughs> I have a stable of very expensive unicorns. But that's what I tell everybody is like, you know, I try to stay. You know, it takes twice as much uh, mental power to generate, cultivate, maintain negative thoughts. So yeah, why don't we just yeah. stay in the land of sunshine and yeah. you know, unicorns? Yeah, because because but but the problem is you're going to lose a, a big big portion of your audience. So you, you don't think this confuses people? Oh, absolutely not. This is what connects with people. Okay. So I just write down all the things I am. I'm a father. I literally laid out, we took a whiteboard Mm -hmm. and said, okay, how how am I going to build my my, my audience out, right? This is when we had 200 followers on Twitter. Right. How am I going to build this audience out, okay? Who am I competing with, by the way? It's it's so noisy out there. You're not competing with other artists. It's like Donald's going to, you know, tweet today. Yep. Uh, Putin's going to do something stupid. Uh, who, who, who knows what's going on in the world? It's just right. noisy, right? Yeah. The, my, the bridge in Miami Falls last it's, it's week. A, it's a lot. Horrendous, right? So you're competing with all this noise. So, okay, I'm, an, I'm a dad. I'm married. Uh, I got a beautiful wife. I'm happy with that, right? Uh, we bought a jet. Should I show that? All my friends, oh, no, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Everybody wants on the jet. Yeah. Why, why would I buy the jet and then hide it? Now, what, the only reason I would do that is because some punk... Some little thinker mm-hmm. is going to be like, oh, you're showing off. Damn right I'm showing off. See, yeah. what I do is I just use the energy. If you work as hard as I do, then you can have your own jet. Yeah. And that's a big purchase. That's the, a big, the, you got to fly a lot. No, you got to have some big cojones <laughs> to buy, to buy. A know, jet. Not to charter. Yeah. Charter, anybody can charter. Yeah, you can charter. I have the, char- I have the charter app. Anybody. You can charter. I can charter a jet yeah. right now. We should have done that. <laughs> You can look at you can look at jets, right? You can take pictures of jets. You can post it, but 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 writing a check for one—that's a big deal. That had to hurt. Oh my uh, god! No, it felt good. Dude. It felt good. Okay. It felt so good. <laughs> oh my I paid, I paid god. for that jet. I bought that jet. I paid that jet's three years old now. We're selling it, but uh, I paid for that jet in six months. 
Nice. But it gets you to where your people are. Time, time is money, man. Time is money. Oh, and I feel that more so than ever. So back to control. Aging. When I, I'm like, I've, yeah. al- I've yeah. always been really good at time management. You know, you know, you know, you're in, you're, you're in college and you're trying to gig and you're yeah. balancing personal life. You learn about time management, especially yeah. the older you get. And but now, it, where there seems like maybe there's more behind the cart than there is in front of the cart. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah, how yeah. do I really want to spend my, you know, next twenty years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah. the thing that's really interesting for me, and I'm sure you get this all the time. And I, 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 I like, I don't have kids so my, yeah. the way I give back to the world is I, I teach kids I mentor yeah, future yeah, generations of musicians kids. you actually have a lot of kids a lot of kids yeah. and so the, the thing is can, can I go to coffee and pick your brain yeah. and the funny thing is is that it's always some starving 18 year do you have a I say some right, starving kid car. he's 18 yeah. years old yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm thinking that I might get a free cup of coffee yeah. I end up buying him coffee because I yeah. know he's starving right, but right, it just right. it feels good to do it but it's very yeah. time consuming to be doing coffee but, but see, all the time one thing you could be doing dude is you, you, should, you should do a thing in Hollywood where it's 30 kids at one time I have drum camps I have drum camps, and you should video. You should you should drop content on those. Yeah, and then you guys should multi-purpose all the content. Like mm-hmm. like I'm not gonna go have coffee with one kid. I think I have hard drives full of content from yes. a couple of drum camps. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're sitting in a hard drive. Yeah, and, and that's what people want to see. I want yeah. I want to see that. I want to see what you cut, how you cut it, how you edited it. Yeah, I want to see the mistakes you made. I want to see the things that work. Uh, you know, like dude, it's endless. Yeah, YouTube has never called me and said I can't post anymore. Facebook has never said, hey, enough. Dude, we're tapping out here yeah. with you. Yeah. In fact, they called us two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I guess, and said, hey, you're the top 10 most watched channels in all of Facebook. Nice. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Really and I'm nice. telling you, the trick is not the content is yeah. good. The content can't be good if you're doing it once or twice. Because you're not going to discover greatness like right. that. Right. You're going to discover greatness through frequency. I think, I th- and this is what I'm learning from you today, so thank you. For me personally, like I tell people, like, like, go to my YouTube channel. There's tons of advice, lessons, behind the scenes, me recording, me playing for 80,000 people. You could tap into that. You can get inspired by it. Yeah. I think I maybe have 450 videos that have been populated over 10 years. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm one of the guys in Nashville that, one of the only guys in Nashville that's at my level of playing that takes the time to do that. Yeah, yeah. But I think what I need to do is more. And, and interviews like like the more inter- the more you can do interviews with other people and pick up their audience yes that's really nice right yeah. so I'll, I'll get you some help on I love that <laughs> hey so and I, look at I look at, I loved your blog I read all your yeah, blog look, yeah. at, look at these are the gems that I picked out selling is not posting on social media selling is not just posting on social media uh, so selling is not Selling is not posting on social media that's no no I, I said look if you're not selling you're using social media and you're not making money with it you're doing it wrong Okay, look, look, selling starts with getting attention. Right. Selling is not a skill set. It's not like for introverts or extroverts or musicians or artists or businessmen. Jeff Bezos doesn't like sales. That's why he built Amazon. So like, like you got to make a commitment. Mm-hmm. Not to get your art out, but to get paid for your art. Get paid for your art. So I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the audience, right? Yeah. Like, like, like you got you to give up the commitment to starvation. It is... It's not even admirable. Commit to prosperity. Exactly. It's an old story. It's like, it's, it's, it's dumb, dude. If Jesus was here right now, he was an artist, by the way. First off, first thing he had to do was get attention. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's what he did, man. He went, and when he wanted to get attention, he started screaming. So, so he, if he was here today, he would definitely have a fleet of Gulf Streams. <laughs> I love would, This is would, big. This is he, big. He would have his own TV show. He would probably he would probably be connected to other artists. Mm-hmm. He might be producing Bruno, right? Bruno, Bruno. Have Steve you heard of this Wonder new producer? Jesus, he's amazing. And yeah. this is get a bigger blueprint for your life. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. What and, we're talking and, about. And, and and but but again, the thing is, you have to get attention. Mm-hmm. Social media now makes the artist you you have control back. You're no longer stuck in uh, Capitol Records. You now can literally. With this distribution network that's paid yourself. for, yeah. you can promote yourself out into the marketplace if you have the courage to promote yourself. Not sell yourself, promote yourself, which means get attention. Nobody's going to do it for you. Mm-hmm. If they're going to do it for you, they're going to control you. Take the control back and say, I'm going to promote myself. Attention is the precursor for all success. Whoever gets the most attention, look at the Kardashians. What is the art? I don't know. I don't, I don't Good know. question. Okay, the, the the youngest one is gonna is gonna have a seven hundred million dollar enterprise. 
the youngest one. So they just took social media and they, ran they got with attention. It. Yes. Whatever the attention was, was it TV? Yeah. Then what was it? YouTube? Was it the combination? Look, look at look at Trump, man. Trump has Apprentice. Trump is always known about the PR game. Yeah, oh yeah. Trump was so committed to PR when he couldn't get the publish to, publicist to to pitch himself, he would call us a third party. I know something about this guy, Donald Trump. He, he would literally mock up the thing. The point is, he took control. All mm. the guys doing the Kevin Hart, he took control of his career. I love that. I love that. And th this is like coming from... Kanye me. married the Kardashians so he could bring it... <laughs> that's uh, like, like start thinking that's smart. about yeah. collaboration. And then, I'm going to give me some big booty. Look at the... Like, and a big following. <laughs> a big booty and a big following. Um, yeah, I, I love a lot of these gems. And then, you know, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a, my midlife, so I'm, I'm reposturing, reinventing, yeah. evolving. And so, you know, so this was in one of your books. On, you, you know, you have to... This shirt, if you're over, it's, this is man, flair, awesome, man. man. Um, if, yeah, if you're over 40 and divorced twice, you buy a custom leather jacket uh -huh. and... A nice sports car, and I'm yeah. I'm happy. What's a sports car? I, I'm leasing an Audi TT. Nice, nice. I see. I didn't buy it. Nice. That's I leased smart. it. That's okay. smart. Nobody should. Buy I, it. I give it back. I give nope. it back in three sure, years. You just roll it in. Just come pick it up. I'm done. It wasn't a one pay lease though. <laughs> Well, actually, Jim was the one that said, you know, Rich, you, you shouldn't do the one thing. You dress really nice, Rich, but when you get out of your Honda Element, people don't pay attention to I you anymore. Like, yeah. yeah, they're watching you. To I see think that that would be cool, through. though, actually. Actually, I've driven, I'm about to purchase my fifth Honda Element in Los yeah. Angeles because I still slept gear around when I'm in L.A., yeah. you know, because I want to go play at the Italian restaurant. I want to go play at a nightclub, yeah. and you can't do that in, a, in an yeah. Audi. Yeah. It's hard to move drums. Yeah. Um, but, they, but look at my choices for my midlife. These are the yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, more, yeah, exactly. the same, or less. What do I want? This is I want more. I asking every day. I want more. I want more. Should I feel guilty about that? This look, is what look, this... Everybody, right? Everybody, like literally every hour, every 30 minutes, every 15 minute segment of the day, you're being asked this question. Do I do more? Do I do just what I did the last 15 minutes? Or do I do less? Whether you know it or not, everybody's going through this concept, right? Every day. Yeah. Do more do I do more do I do less is more better is less better is bigger better smaller better and you're and what's the, tell tell so you the, got some buddies that you got some buddies that believe less is better smaller is better oh bigger is not better lots okay they have free it's because they quit on more mm -hmm. they quit on more yeah they quit on more the only people that would tell you big is bad quit on big they quit on big because because the only people that the only people that you and I both know their names of got big Right. If they committed to the same, first of all, they became less because there is no way to you eventually become less. Same always becomes less. Now this feeds into this concept. Yeah. So for so Multipliers. for my audience, the X is a multiplier. Will you explain that yeah, yeah. that so, concept? So the X is a multiplier. Okay. The X is not actually an X. It's a multiplier. It it, it means that like my daughter, my first daughter, uh, Sabrina, when I taught her how to count, it was like, look, you just need to count the first ten numbers. Actually, the first eleven numbers. Zero is a number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. After that, don't worry about any more addition and definitely don't worry about subtraction. What you do from there is multiply. Mm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 100. 100, 1,000, 1,000, 10,000, 10,000, 100,000, 100,000, 100,000. Yeah. So think in multipliers rather than in reasonable increments. And that's how people explode businesses. That's how Google, like Google uses the 10X rule. When they're buying a business, they're thinking about multipliers. How do I multiply my business as opposed to Toys R Us? thinks about how can we add one store <sighs> Amazon's like we don't want to add any stores because you can't scale it right what we want to do is have everything in one place and add 10 million users this month without a store change change the world it starts providing solutions right start you start thinking in uh, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars he's not interested <laughs> in going to the UK yeah it's a, he, yeah, yeah. We got that one figured out. He wants to go there. Yeah. That's crazy. Nobody yeah. knows how. Nobody knows what it'll cost. Nobody knows what's there. And he's like, yeah, we should do it. Yeah. It's a big think, man. And with that kind of big giant think comes something. I don't know if he gets to Mars. But some solution comes in the process uh, that, yeah. that is big. That's a, that's a great that's a great philosophy. Wow. Um, yeah, so personally, what, what you're saying is, okay, so you want to be more successful doing anything you do. Do 10 times more than yeah. what you're doing right now. Yeah. And you will see so, results. So, so you're posting twice a day, to use that example? 20 times. Say, hey, let's go for 20. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my God, that'd be impossible. No, it wouldn't. You would do you would do six posts on Facebook. I'd use Twitter six times a day. Mm -hmm. 
It's a garbage. Do you use hashtag on it's Twitter? Gar- it's, hashtags are stupid. Okay. <laughs> Frequency is the holy grail. So you're not, do you use hashtags on sure Instagram? I sure I do, but yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah. It, 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 you, people are looking for shortcuts. I'm going to put a hashtag and somehow I'm going to get a follower because of a hashtag. Yeah, so whoever's looking for drum lessons is going to, you know unicorns. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay, well, everything on unicorns comes up. It's like, how are you going to find my post about, yeah, come on. It, 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 come on, man, please. I hear you. And then what happens is I don't post again for two days. People trust frequency. Whoever's there the most is going to be the most. Tr- That's why Jim wants me to be doing podcasts, like two, at least two podcasts a week. How many and, you do? And I to a month because I, tr- I, you know, I'm wearing a lot of hats. I'm, I, I'm because 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 you tell yourself this lie that you you understand time management. I, you don't. You know what you I'm going to do? Well, I'm making earlier, excuses. You said I manage time well, but you don't. Mm. You actually don't. Manage you know what I'm going to do? Well, I'm, yeah. I'm inspired because the frequency. You cannot manage hashtag real. frequency. You cannot manage something that's not real. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? Is not real. He's he's my co-pilot. So when I'm in Nashville, <laughs> when I'm in Nashville, he's going to be he's going to he's going to be my my Ed McMahon, my right my my wingman. And then when I'm on the road, I'm around a million creative people and smart people. I could just have a little recorder and just do episodes that way. Bam. You should be interviewing all those people, man. I'm going to do it. You know. I'm going to do it. Now, do we have any questions on uh, Facebook Live? You know, I was just going to ask um, what's the most satisfying thing about what you do? You know, the most sad, the really good question. I've never been asked that question. Before. Wow, man, what satisfies me? You know, the thing that satisfies me is like other people being successful. Like that gets me, that is, for instance, we do a meeting here every day at 9.06 in the morning. We experienced it. Oh, oh yeah, it was special. great. So all we talk about in that meeting is who's being successful, what, what were the numbers from yesterday, mm-hmm. and then who's been successful. Like our valuable final product of our company is people winning with our products not how much money we make. Because I know that, that if I can increase the number of people that see my product and have success with the product, we know the business is gonna grow. Yeah, it was a great rah-rah. I mean, everybody that was yeah. winning yeah. got, got yeah. A applause. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. really, really fun. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Jim? Does any uh, anybody from our network chimed in and wanna know something uh, with Mr. I'm actually Carter? gonna, I'll, I'll flip that question around. Um, yeah. What's the most aggravating thing about it? You know, the aggravating thing is, is, is uh, probably my own limitation like like the thing I don't want to do is I don't want to do the same thing over and over again I get bored with it mm-hmm. I've done that you know we had we had uh, almost 15,000 people at, a, at an event the one before that we had 2,200 people there you know the next I, got, I, I either have to figure out how to get 30,000 people in one event or I'll quit doing it and your third event's coming up in October uh, we don't know when it, we, yeah. we actually don't know the date now this is a really great thing for, for artists to know that like I don't have a date I don't have an arena and we've already sold 2,000 tickets <laughs> oh that's great okay I, I don't have an agenda an arena location a date and I'm already selling now of those 2,000 do you have some repeat offenders from the first two years yeah we have re- that's yeah, great they're, they're repeat and, and then we're already advertising it or marketing it without, without a date without a location without a time why because time location and de- dates these are all made up stuff we, we don't deal with stuff that's made up like so the thing that frustrates me the most is I'm surrounded by a lot of people that think that think we think with because of the way we're we're, we're educated we, we think with time you know what time is it man what time is it anybody what time does somebody know what time it is it's all made up how much money is it going to cost it's bullshit it's made up it's all made up. Mm-hmm. All this stuff that we operate with, time management, how can you manage something that doesn't exist? Okay, I don't, I don't try to manage time. I don't need another thing to do. I try to create time. You said you expand time. I want to expand it. I want, I want to get more done in this short period of time. So when I, like, I don't know what I'm doing every now, day. How do you do that? You have to have, you have a team, right? Yeah, I have a team. People, oh, you got a haircut this morning. Okay, so I went and did the haircut. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I get done with that. What do I got to do? I got rich. Who's rich? <laughs> oh, <laughs> rich. That, that, that guy. Okay, good, good. I don't know how long this is going to last. Right. It's going to last as long as you and I decide it's going to last, and then it's over. Then what do I do next? And then I move to the things that are most survival for the business. Mm-hmm. But you don't pre-plan those? You don't have a day planner where you go like no. hour by I, hour? I don't have a day planner. I, I have a day, I have a 10X planner, and the 10X planner says, this is my goals. Has nothing to do with what I'm going to do today. Mm-hmm. Big, big giant goals. I write my goals down twice a day. When I wake up in the morning, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a four billion dollar business. I no, no clue how to get there. I'm writing that down every morning, and I write it down again at night. 
Like, where am I going? What are the big goals? Not the achievable things I can do today, not a to-do list. Then throughout the day, I'll have things scheduled out because Katie will put it on my schedule. I have to do those things. So your anti-to-do list. Uh, am I anti to do Because if I because if I don't write that stuff down, I ain't gonna get done, man. Because I'm not gonna remember because of my my aging brain. Yeah, dude, it's good. <laughs> you're, you're gonna get that old, dude. But did it's, you write this down today? Hmm? Did you write this down? Oh today? yeah, I had a, that alert. Beep beep beep. You know, it's time yeah. to go in. Yeah, Come it's, on. it's time you're to go to good. Miami. Oh. That's, 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 oh, that's, yeah, that's I'm, I'm so over like I'm a scheduled like I know what I'm doing almost every day and night until yeah. June 6th all I know is I'm doing something yeah as long as you're doing something okay. yeah. I'm doing something that's going to be expansive because I've committed to this more concept to, to, to not just a little more to like a lot more you know dominate I would like to be omnipresent yeah <laughs> I would like to be everywhere like right now we're, we're, I'm trying to figure out how do I get to Paris London Singapore Taipei Tokyo, Sydney, Brisbane. How do I go and meet those people? You mean for events? No, just the first time just to meet them and make friends. Okay. To get, to get, look, if you don't know me, it's impossible yeah. for you to play with me. Right. You can't give me, you can't support my charities, you can't help me, you can't, no, like my goal is to get, see, you're thinking about the next 30, 20 years of your life, I'm thinking about the next 100. Oh, so you're thinking we're going to come up with some awesome medicine? No, no. Okay. No, to I keep know us for alive. Sure that medicine will not keep this body alive. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm interested in what happens, the Walt Disney effect. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I want to be around when I'm not around. And you have a foundation, right? Yeah. And, and it's uh yeah. benefits. But, but that, that, that's not the the foundation's one thing, but that's not going to be leave the big legacy. Right. The big legacy will be the example I set, the friends I made. You know, I want to go to China because I want my daughter, I want people to know my daughter so that 30 years from now, you're like, I knew your dad. Right. You know, well, you already the books. You already have a legacy the, as an the, author. The, the books are very much a legacy. But again, the books have to get out to people. Mm -hmm. right. Otherwise, it's just a book. Like there's, if a book guarantees a legacy, then everybody, almost everybody on the planet has got one. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the average author only sells like 100 books. That's so sad. It's sad, dude. That's pathetic. But, but similar to an artist. Well, and the thing is, is that, you know, Nashville is the songwriting capital of the world. Yeah. If you like writing songs and you put w words and music together, even if you're a hotshot songwriter from New York or L.A., you will find yourself in Nashville at some point. Yeah. And it's right going on right now. People are trying to write the next big hit song, and it's going to end up as a bunch of zeros and ones as an MP3 in some yeah. hard yeah. drive. Yeah. And unless that person yeah. believes in that song 100% yeah. and champions it yeah. and lets people hear it, it'll never see the yeah. light of day. And I felt the same way about people buying into me as a person so they can experience my talent, fall in love with my talent, Right. hire me as a right. drummer continue to hire me as a drummer because it's my passion it's my purpose I know that my drumming and music makes a difference in people's lives but I can't make a difference in people's lives unless they know I exist yeah, yeah exactly so, so the, the, the thing is to spend more money in advertising more money in marketing more money in attention and don't worry about the return mm -hmm. okay everybody's like what's the return on investment how do you measure the return on investment I invested something on a Facebook ad or I bought this or I Dude, what's the return on investment if you don't do it? I, fa I have never gotten a return on a $100 Facebook post. You don't need a return. Ugh. You need attention. Yeah. You don't need a return. You need attention. I don't need a return on everything. I got I got a toilet back there uh, for people that need to take a piss, but nobody's using it right now. Should I get rid of it? There's no return on investment on a toilet. You need it. You when you need it, you need it. You really need it. You do. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so if nobody knows you, you're not going to have a place to take a piss. Right. Yeah, yeah. I love it. This has been a great... How are we doing on time, Jim? We're doing... We're doing, we're doing we, we're time, time's not real, right? Yeah, time's not real. I had the timer ticking time, here. Time is stupid. Oh, um... My daughter, my daughter, my, my six-year-old daughter said to me yesterday, Papa, I, I don't think time's even real. But what happens when she's five minutes late for class? <laughs> Probably was a good thing. <clears throat> She get attention from I the love teacher. that. You know, I... The, the, uh, the last... By the way, she's five minutes late. It was my fault, not hers. The last ex-wife said... You can't bend time. You're trying to fit too many things into your life and you're late to things and people hate people. You're late. I'm, so, I'm trying to make a lot of people happy, including yeah. myself. Yeah. And, and so and, and I Rich, tried to expand to time. With, like, you should t make, make sure you're happy first. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. You, you, but you and, you and her should have had an agreement going into the deal. Your job wasn't to make her happy. Your job is to make you happy. Mm -hmm. Her job should be to make her happy. And the two happy people can come together.
but you guys were on different. Pages. That's a great. Well, we were definitely on different pages. You know? but, yeah. And then me and my wife. I told my wife. I said I'll do anything for you, except give up on my dreams. If I am required for you to give me a blowjob, I have to give up my dreams. It's getting real here in Miami. And I'm gonna go get a blowjob some other place. I'm just telling you. I like. Let's keep it real. There's four billion people that can blow me. Keep it real. Okay. Dot com. <laughs> this it's four billion people on the planet. At least maybe eight. If 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 I don't if think I stretch my. I don't my, think you want all I, of them to give you a blowjob though, but because the, I'm just saying if I want one bad enough, it can happen. Okay. Now now what? But is, not at the coffee shop with a young boy. No, no, no. <laughs> not cool. It's, it's not totally not, not cool. cool. Not that it's not all right. Yeah. It's just not cool at the coffee shop. So if you were to leave... So I just told my wife, I said, look, I'll do anything for you. I'll freaking take bullets. I'll, 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 I'll climb mountains. I'll do anything, but I will not give up on my dreams. My dreams were with me before you. Mm -hmm. They were with me before the kids that come later. They were, I cannot... If I abandon the dream, then I'll, then I'll abandon everything. Mm -hmm. So I had that agreement from her, right? I love that. She's like, but I, do I have to sign a prenup? I said, no, you don't. <laughs> no prenup. That's a great. It's you know, a good deal. Yeah. Not a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. So in yeah. in, in closing, yeah. 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 Uh, is there anything else you would like to talk about or promote no, and any part, parting words? Help people. All yeah. I want to do is help people. And, yeah. and, and if, you, if, you, if you hate me because of this message, I apologize because of my delivery. I have a terrible delivery. Uh, it, I know it comes off a bit good it's authentic Some people don't like it yeah but number two if you don't like the message right now just give me a second shot or a third shot and, and you I, I, I bet you some of this starts making sense to you it great it goes against the grain because we've all been educated to think a certain way mm -hmm. save your money don't buy a house or do buy a house they tell you to buy a house save your money you shouldn't save your money you should use money these are just concepts you've been brainwashed okay saving money was for the banks buying a house was for the banks the Kia was for the banks all these were for banks. They weren't for you. You need to use your money, okay? And, and to make more money. To make more money. While you're sleeping. That's the dream. That's the dream to I mean, make that, money while you're that, sleeping. That's a cool deal. That's a cool deal to make it while you're awake. And, 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 and when you're not working, it's still coming in. I mean, it does give you freedom to produce more. Yeah. Right? So, so that you're not under the stress all the time. So do more. Don't do less. You're going to be happier. We're all happier when we do more. Mm. Except when you're doing more of what you don't want to do. Mm. Nobody wants to do that. And then get great at the things you hate. If you can get great at the things you hate, you'll get great at something mm. that you love. That's a that's a meme. Great takeaways. Yeah. Get great at what you hate. I mean, it rhymes and everything. And you'll get Kanye. And you'll get great at something. I love it. Thank you so okay. much for Dude, having you, me in your house you, today. Bro. Appreciate you finding out about me. Would, How'd you discover me the first are time? Are you kidding me? No, I it, you, like you know you and Gary V are like yeah, the mavens, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. And this guy talks about you every single yeah. day. He's like you. I've got to connect you. Yeah. And talk about persistence and determination. Yeah. He bugged Katie for yeah, yeah, awesome. weeks, awesome. months, like twice a month. See, but let me tell you, when you guys are listening, Jim you believes in me. Listen to to, to the uh, to, to Gary. Okay, Gary, Gary, Gary will make it all right for you to starve. Gary's wrong. Nobody should starve. Nobody should make 40 grand a year. Mm -hmm. Nobody. There's nobody on this planet that should make 40 grand a year. I don't care if you live in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You cannot live on 40 grand a year. Well, what about the mother trying to make it, the single mother trying to make it on 11 grand a year? How does she do it? I mean, this happens. You'll figure out how to do it. Yeah. Okay, I made, I made $20,000 a year. That was $1,000 above the poverty line when I was 25 years old. And my uncle's like, hey, you're, you're $1,000 above the poverty line. I'm like, dang, I didn't know that. I made sense of this. I figured out how to do it. Yeah. I remember when I moved to Nashville, uh, mate, this was uh, 21 years ago, a ma major label recording artists were paying 175 to $200 a show to be away from your family 24 hours a day on a tour bus and playing their music for audiences. And my dad said, son, I don't want to crush your dream, but do you realize that you're going to have to play 100 shows a year to make like $15,000? And I said... It doesn't matter. I was the I was the artist. I yeah, was like, yeah, I'm yeah, doing yeah, this. Yeah. And now that I'm more in, you know, 20 years have passed, yeah. thinking more practically. Yeah, yeah. You know, thank God I'm not making that kind of money yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. But when I moved to Nashville, it's just like I am doing this no matter what. Yeah. And this is this is what I tell a lot of creatives that move to town. I say, take everything. Do the coffee house yeah, gig. Yeah, totally, play totally, for totally. tips. Do the wedding. Build your brand yeah. and your reputation because your reputation will precede you yeah. and the only way to develop a reputation is day by day doing the right thing. Back to back. Day by day and you'll create a great rep reputation. Yeah. And it takes time. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure.